Hello everyone, I-0386SX, we're building another battery, but it's not a typical one of which you would see on this channel. Most of my stuff that I've built here to this point has been from and for compacts. There is going to be very little to no compact information shared today. Instead, we are going to build a battery for the IBM PC Convertible 5140, if I'm not mistaken. I did try to take apart an original one of these. It didn't go very good. It broke. This is the part number. And this is the inside of the original. And very straightforward. At the bottom we have a fuse, fused together with a couple of tightly wound thermal strips or nickel strips. I don't know why I called them thermal strip, but they're nickel strips. And it's just a nickel cadmium pack. Nothing but wire, fuse, battery, and wire. No fancy. No fancy thermostats, no fancy fuses, just my kind of battery. So that comes back to, if my case is crap, where did I get a case? Well, I'm going to be going off of an Instructables.com tutorial. This is actually for a customer. And the customer was nice enough to 3D print me. A case for the IBM PC Convertible 5140. So that's what we're going to go with. And we got some connectors. We got those uh, straight from Mauser. No drama there. The pack of fuses for cheap. And of course the case. And we got this wire from Amazon. And well, it's one of those uh, made in China things. And but I do like the quality of this wire. As you can tell, I've actually used it on other applications already. And just it feels nice and stiff and the way that wire should be. I get a lot of wire on Amazon. The, the insulation feels cheap. It's just flimsy. Not a big fan. We also have two brands of batteries. There is a unfortunate comedy of errors with the batteries. I originally ordered the EBL brand. Amazon kept jerking me around. I'm like, oh, we're, we're very sorry that it's late. We're very sorry that it's late. So, in between time, and since this is for a customer, I also did go and get the Tenergy brand, which is a, they are name brand. They've been around for a while, and I know that they're good. EBL might be okay too, I'm not sure. But we'll compare the two real quick, because it on the surface they look pretty good. Let's break one of these out. There's uh, what they came with. They came in a nice plastic case. They came with solder tabs already. And so uh, from the surface, EBL is a legitimate choice. I've never actually used their stuff, so I have no idea if they're actually any good. The Tenergy I've used several times, both in customer and personal applications. And yeah, that's nickel cadmium. Little less juice, but I know this brand. They've been around for a while. They are a leader in the remanufactured battery world. So I am good with that. Now, there is a little bit of a notable handicap here. The EBLs just had the same problem as well. You will notice, well, maybe we'll wind it up here. The batteries are just a little bit smaller. That's okay. And just to show, since I'm dragging my feet already installing, 
Oh, this one's got a quality seal on it. The EBLs have the same problem. I get one out of the box here. There we go. So our little buddy, the EBL, is also the same size. So physically, they're a little bit smaller, but that's okay. That means more room to work with. As long as this has the same amount of charge or better, it shouldn't matter. Now, the guide on instructables, it does start out pretty straightforward. You have one, two, three. Those are all tied together as one long cell. It's going to be these two here that are going to be a small bit of interest, but you know what? That's okay. The key word is small. So, we are going to take out our spot welder. And let's begin. Oh. All right, so we're going to line them up like we always do. With them being a little bit smaller, there is a little bit more room for leeway. If you don't get these exactly perfect, that is okay, as long as you can connect them and it doesn't keep the case up or anything stupid like that, you should be home free. So, here we go. There is that. And, of course, we need, at this point, the spot welder and some nickel strip to go with it. I do have some wider nickel strips. A millimeter wider. These cells are a little bit bigger than what I'm used to working with. We're going to debut the one millimeter wider nickel strips. Now, if you have the ones with the, the tabs already on them, you may be able to use some of those tabs for to cut down on some of the work. I do not have those as that didn't bother me either way since I do own a spot welder. Alright, so we need to cut this. Or line it up. There we go. So. I'm going to turn the intensity down on this, uh, or the gears down, if you will, down to a minimal point. We'll see how that goes. We'll go from there. Much like anything else, you don't want to hit the edge of your nickel strip, or you will get sparks. Sparks bad. And we probably can afford to turn this up just a little bit. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll turn it up to the mid-range here. And a nice thing about these batteries compared to what I'm used to working on is that there's a lot more working room. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I might just go on this side and do a couple. There we go. Now, this is a $50 spot welder, so miracles are not to be expected. Usually, I cut these to length before I do this, but this work, this uh, solution works as well. Oh, this may have something that actually may semi work out here. sparked a little but that's minor it didn't light up like the 4th of July that's what you don't want so 
little bit long, but it's doable. All right. Few extra spot welds never hurt anyone. Yeah, so that's that concludes our really straightforward part of the video. So all you have to do at this point is fold these together. At least with there we go. If you have some kind of tape, or better yet, if you have the right sized uh, heat shrink, you can go ahead and mold them together that way as well. That will work just fine. And I think we found out a little bit the hard way why we don't make these too long, but we'll cross that bridge if or when we get there. Go. So we have our really easy ones. And the instructables guide will tell you how to line these up exactly. But this set, if we were to stare at it like this, your negatives are up on the first two rows and then your positives would be up on a third row. something along these lines but I do have to cover those leads up otherwise we'll have boom let's separate those for now and like I said that could be done in one of two ways you can either heat shrink something on the outside or electrical tape or there's that uh, there's some thin tape I don't know what it's called but they use it in sublimation a lot it can take a lot of heat, it can take a lot of abuse, so. That's an option. Uh, I may have some heat shrink that may work just fine, so let's see. I much prefer to do the heat shrink just because it looks so much cleaner. But we will see if I have so. This stuff may simply be too small, but we'll, like I guess I will find out. It looks a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just gonna have to do the uh, old fair and true tape method on this for now. So, yeah, that is, that is what it is, and I almost think I have to do that right now, so. With the magic of video editing, I'm going to do that offline, and then we'll continue on from there. Okay, they're far from perfect, but I decided to go shrink wrap because I accidentally found this stuff here. I had no idea what I originally bought it for. I don't even know what size it is. But regardless, I had it. It does the job. We're going to roll with it. So, anywho... We need to build this thing out a little bit more, and I'm not entirely sure how to do that, so we're going to wing it. I actually think it is probably going to be the simplest task here, is that we're going to... Oh, we almost have to run the wire leads first. Because I think once we... Yeah, we're going to have to run the wire leads first. But, I think we can just do that with the spot welder for now. So out comes more nickel strip. So if we follow closely, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative. So our two cells are going to be flipped like so. And the middle one is actually going to get a wire on it. We'll make it fairly long. You can always cut it down later. And it may be advisable to do this beforehand, but well, we're gonna wing it.
It's a little smoky today, folks. All right, so that one is done, and we'll just simply bend it over. There's a few means to covering that up once you are said and done. I recommend either like electrical tape or there's like little boots you can put on them, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So the one all the way on the left gets a negative, a nickel strip as well, directly attached. So we'll do that now. Keep that one off to the side. And I know the uh, what you call it the the insulation the heat shrink is a very crude job. Nobody's gonna see it. Well, we're all gonna see it, but you get my idea. It is not going to affect the performance of the battery. This just happened to be by some sheer dumb luck that we had it here. So, in theory, we're going to keep these relatively apart for the time being. There's something along the lines here. And then these two will get attached together. But I think, at this point, we've got to attach the other two in some way, shape, or form. And I believe IBM... I'm just trying to examine exactly what they did here. And I'm actually kind of having a hard time. It looks like it's barely attached. So we will, uh, we're not going to quite follow their model on that, but we're, and we don't really have to follow this model 100% because we do have a little bit of leg room. But we are going to be pretty much to the book on this one. So I re realize that I'm kind of in the way here. Yeah, so there's that. We got that one going. So now we got to attach a battery. It almost seemed like we just got to half attach it somehow. Now the positive leads on these old ones are quite huge. I do have the luxury of an extra battery to use as a, uh, uh, what you call it, a means of leverage, if you will. So that's what I'm going to do here. We will do this in a precautionary state. I'll take that off too. Not that I don't think that that's going to become a problem, but there we go. That is uh, all taped off. We should be off to the races. So I think that's I kind of how IBM had it. This may take a few tries to perfect, but that is all right if we have to do a couple teardowns. It's not the end of the world here. All right. So that side is now attached to something. Let's see if we can emulate the shape of this. Like I said, there is a small amount of leeway here. And I think we pretty much got it under control. So that part's good. So we're going to set that off to the side. 
and I could have easily insulated that battery for uniform, but eh, who cares? So now, for the eighth and final battery, I am going to borrow one of our EBL branded ones and use that as a guide. I do admit that this is going a little bit slower than I anticipated, but, you know, that's life. And of course, I grabbed the one with the damn quality seal on it, so it's... <laughs> Alright. Goodbye, quality seal. So, same drill. We'll tape this one up. undo this one and we're gonna pretty much do the same thing I did on that other battery except we're gonna line it up like this because you got something like that going on there we go and maybe this battery I have a feeling is a little bit more crooked than it's uh, counterpart here, or there is a, well, that's why. Let's see if we can flatten that a little bit. There we go. The heat shrink is uh, everything but perfect here. So, we need more nickel strip. We got her. We got this. Or do we? Oh, this might be a little short. We'll see. Yeah, we'll cut it. We're going to call that one too short, and we're just going to use this whole thing. I kind of want to emulate what I did on the other battery, so I may do this one all the way, and then the positive one will have a little less attachment to it, but we shall see. Solder the heck out of this one. How about that? All right, we got that one kind of put together. We'll put EBL out of the way here. I'm going to see if we can try and cut this nickel strip off. See? I don't wait to the end to put the blooper reels in. We just roll with it here. But I promise we'll have a good battery here. So there is that. I think we are doing pretty good in terms of uh, shaping roughly to the original anyway. So there is that, so there's that. So now we get a really fun task here and I don't know quite how we're gonna do it just yet, but we have to attach the fuse somehow, some way. I think the first thing is first, it's kinda odd that this one isn't insulated, but, but once we do, we're gonna have to do it. So I'm gonna take this part offline with the magic of video editing. I am gonna, have these uh, new ones insulated up, and then we'll move on. Okay, I have a real mess going on, but pardon the mess, because we're getting there. This stuff, it's not medical tape, it's actually cloth electrical tape. I actually took a book out of the, or took a page out of the book of Compaq, well, wait for me to butcher a joke here. I don't uh, do comedy on this channel, we all retro IT and IT related subjects here, but but Compaq, especially in their LTE 5000s and sometimes the elites, they like to use this cloth electrical tape to cover up and protect contacts, and the ones that do, less often do I see them, 
those leaking. And the tape is usually intact. Other compacts will use just plain old packaging tape or clear tape. And on the LTE lights and the elites, uh, you will see, I think they call it fish paper. And that stuff's almost always completely disintegrated by the time you tear those apart. So it does the job, but I don't know. They, After tearing apart a few 5,000 batteries, the case is absolutely made to use this cloth electrical tape. All right. And you almost could keep this on in its entirety because you don't have to, due to the simplicity of this battery, once you assemble it. Come on, get under there. I may have made this too short, but that's all right. Now comes the most difficult part of this project. We have to... Uh, put these together uh, that we have to put the fuse on. I'm not sure if this is a thermal fuse or if it's just a regular old fuse once it reaches the exceeds its uh, capacity it blows or if it ex reaches a certain temperature it blows. So that may be why they have you do it in the way of well we'll fold the fuse over blah blah blah. And you know that is some Precise, uh, what you call it, uh, precise direction there. Highly professional. Uh, we gotta get one of our little fuses out here. There we go, champs. And we got a fuse. Alright, we gotta get the fuse back in this little bag. And some idiot decided to either throw his first set out or... Amazon neglected. I'm not sure which one. Probably the idiot uh, threw them out because there was a lot of stuff that day and they were just working a little too fast. You know, anybody that knows me has a tendency to know that I do work too fast sometimes. And I am not really liking the way this is sitting. So, we gotta get creative here. And I'll be honest, there's probably a better way to do this, but you know me. We are going to definitely compact this up a little bit, at least for the moment. No, you don't need LTE light batteries or LTE elite batteries specifically to do this. You just need a weight. And those two can be probably taped together. So this is not going the way I anticipated, but well, that's my fault. There we go. We are at least together in some capacity. So now what we'll do is that we will put some nickel strip on. This part, I've never actually done it in this fashion, but it does seem very simple. A little bit sparky, but no big deal. All right. There's that, we got a couple attached. And the good news is that one that was ultimately too short ultimately did work out as we just used it just now. All right. And okay. I think the spot welds on this one are kind of crappy, but I think it'll hold together. And now, what we're supposed to do is fold this, uh, these nickel strips over. We're probably going to cut these leads off a bit, but that is perfectly doable. Yeah, we'll definitely have to cut them. Straighten them out a little bit. And without question, we're going to be cutting some stuff off here. But I respect the strategy that uh, the IBM and or the Instructable, Instructable actually did here. 
there may be a legitimate reason why it was done like this, uh, especially if it was a thermal fuse, it actually is act a smart idea. That way there's no solder involved. I'm gonna pinch this puppy in so that way it doesn't ever lose contact. We'll cut the leads off after the fact. It looks like those are absolutely not going anywhere, so we just gotta carefully spot weld these back on. And in theory, this side should be done. Yeah. There we go. Oh, shit. Every once in a while, you will get a profanity out of this channel. Deal with it. So now, we should be able to cut those leads off. And we should be good. Probably could have done a tad bit better job on the actual, uh... yeah, this is kind of a loose connection. I'm not in love with this idea, but I probably did not do it right. That side is done regardless, so now we gotta connect two more cells together here. This is gonna be rather interesting and probably not the best course of action with the way I did it, but well, it is what it is. Nice and simple. All we gotta do is connect this set, and in theory, we should be concluded with our spot welding techniques. My spot welder works sometimes. Yeah. Okay. None of that smart ass stuff here, guys. All right, so there you have it. There is your battery mostly put together. The phone's going mental. Ah, new egg, go away. Anywho, we're losing all sorts of stuff. Maybe as a precautionary tale, we'll tape up the uh, this end here. Let's put some of this cloth stuff on here. That seems to uh, just be an extra precaution. Maybe it'll hold things in place a little bit better. I'm not sure. Now, I did make a mistake here. Well, we made lots of mistakes today. But it's very fixable. I have to take some of this tape off I used to hold the pack together to expose those uh, extra so long solder leads that I had. Some of these are put in the wrong spot, unfortunately, but I think with these being a little bit smaller, I don't see that being a necessarily a problem so I gotta either cut this one yeah we're gonna do that we're gonna cut this one because there is one exposed right here and now the question is did I put that in the right spot almost I think I can work with that. OK. 
case anything should happen in transit, you know, this stuff is cheap. A blue battery is not. A blown battery. I don't like called blue, but... Probably could do that to solder it. Raise it up just a little bit, but... Anywho. Your spot welding portion of this video is now complete. At least in theory it should be. Uh, if you want to take your multimeter at this time and test voltage and make sure you're getting any voltage, it's not a terrible time to do that. Uh, I'm going to do that right now. The battery itself is 9.6 volts by the time all is said and done. But I don't know how charged or discharged these might be, so we may have slightly less or more. We shall see. Alright, so we'll get that right. And, you know, it would probably help if I do that. We got no voltage. Okay, that's interesting. We have no voltage whatsoever. So something got disconnected. So I get to troubleshoot that, but I am going to do that part offline. All right, I have no idea what I did, but it did start reading voltages after I uh, went around and did some troubleshooting on this. Uh, so I don't know. I have no actual explanation for that. So we're going to uh, leave it as is, and we're going to get out the soldering gun at this time. And do the parts that require solder. Get some of these tools out of the way. Well, actually, I am going to do, I'm going to let the soldering iron warm up. I'm going to try and play with our ends here a little bit, get the wire cut, and hopefully we can crimp these on. If we can't, then I'm going to cheat, and I do have some pre-cut wires that should work. So, we'll see how this goes. We got a bunch of ends, we got some wire, we got tools. Like I said, this two-fang wire is excellent for, what it, uh, for the purpose it serves. It's inexpensive, but it doesn't feel inexpensive. It actually feels like a quality wire, so that we do have that much going for us. And I'm going to separate this, uh, make it easier to work with. At least that's the theory. It may not be entirely possible to do with this, uh, but I'm going to try anyway. There you go. I don't know something about buying a bigger idiot or a better idiot. I don't know. I'll be honest, this went on a lot longer than I anticipated it going, but I also did go a lot slower than I normally would on one of these. So we gotta strip a little bit off. We'll start with the positive, which is gonna be the longer of the two leads. And I'll be honest, I never fully mastered this whole crimping thing, but I did get a different crimping tool in the hopes that I just had a bum one. Or one not quite designed for these DuPont connectors, in which I am about to play with. There are literally no instructions with this thing, so I hope that we can master this in a quick way, 0.8 to 0.5 millimeters. I'm going to do this part offline, 
because I'm not sure how well it's going to go, and I think if I record this, it's going to be already longer, so I'll... Either way, by the time we return, we'll have wiring right now. Well, folks, I either had the wrong tools for the longest time, or I accidentally did something right. I think I crimped two ends perfectly in a row. Uh, we didn't do the plug test yet, so maybe we shouldn't celebrate just yet. Uh, hold on here. Let's find something we can plug into this. I thought I had something convenient to help, but this does not look like the case. Well, this is a pain. used to have a whole set of these uh, DuPont connectors, you know, those kits you get on Amazon. And every one of them, lo and behold, has gone missing. Must they're behind something. Maybe. Uh, no. Well, you don't need to hear me look through stuff right now, so... Maybe we should just video edit that out, since we've already video edited so much other stuff out. I'm going to do just that. When I test this end out for sure and know it's good, then we will continue on with my little distant madness. But you don't take my word for it, but I actually did crimp two of these perfectly on the first try. So I guess the tools mean all the difference in the world. So this is uh, this professional crimping press for the best techno. It, it's about as generic as you can get, but. This is the crimping tool that I actually did use, and it's a no easy. That's what I use for the DuPont. Uh, there's a, I don't know what happened to the other one that's, oh. This is the one I tried originally with my other ones, I think, and this one absolutely just wouldn't do it. So, I don't know. Could be a fluke. Could have finally mastered this art. I'm not sure, but either way, I am happy with the end result. So, tied to solder. And unfortunately, this one I did not line up the way I wanted to. But I think that should be okay, given that the batteries are smaller than the originals. And just for food for thought here, I'll show you the original. If you look, if you buy the parts from Mauser, you'll notice this little uh, lip here. The red, if you're looking at it like this, the red wire is on the left. If you're plugging it into your IBM convertible, I believe this part goes up, and the red wire would be on the right. So if you're, in case you're using non-keyed DuPont connectors, that is something to be aware of. I don't actually have an IBM PC convertible to test this in, so we are going, again... This is going to be at the mercy of what we can do here. All right, so we're going to tape that end off because I don't like that just floating around free. I know this is probably not the best choice of tape, but we're going to do it. So what I think we can kind of do here, we'll do something along the lines of that. You know, the good news is the tape is, the tape ah, wire is stiff. The bad news is the wire is stiff. All right, so let's try to solder this on. I think we're just going to do a very basic job. At least that's what we should be able to do here. Not too shabby. We heated up both parts, so no cold solder joints even. How about that? And now we gotta raise this part up, but we gotta do the negative. That's handle the screwdriver should do just fine. Okay. Heck, this is gonna be a fun one, but I think we're gonna need some assistance. minimum with some kind of tape. I think the masking tape, painter's tape will do for this exercise, but 
Eu sei. I think that should hold her just enough in place. Not at all, I don't know yet. Almost. I don't know if I liked how much solder's on there, but it does do the job. That, there it is. That is your battery. I know I used the tape a little bit more crudely than I typically do on a build, but it's not going to short out, and it's not going to go anywhere. Those are the two primary objectives here. So we'll put a little bit more on there, because why not? So there's that. We are now covered. We should never ever short out. And now we can put the battery in our case. The instructables, which we are way off the base of by now, I'm sure, did suggest that you can hot glue this in its king in its uh, place and then super glue the top on. We're gonna find out if that's the case here. I don't have any hot glue on hand, but fits like a glove. In that regard, yeah, we just gotta shove this wire in here. Maybe the 22 gauge was just a little too thick, I don't know. But either way, we should be able to slap this cover on. And I know it's just loose, so it's not gonna be perfect, but uh, it would really be of a great benefit for both parties here if we can actually get this on correctly there we go and there you have her right there is a far from perfect rebuilt IBM convertible 5140 battery but it is ready to rock and roll in your IBM PC 5140 I'm going to test the voltage again just because it never hurts to test voltage. Yeah, come on. We got zero. We're not touching. Oh, we got 10.37. So these Tenergy cells were barely charged. We'll do that again because uh, let's see if I can get my arm out of the way. There you go. So, all we gotta do now is uh, find a way to put these uh, cells gloom in place. I'm gonna use hot glue, likely. And then, just glue the case back on and get this puppy off to its customer. But at any rate, it should work. We got charge, we got voltage floating through, and everything's good to go. And, little full disclaimer, I am not an IBM expert. I do like IBM computers. I do like, I'm a huge ThinkPad fan, despite uh, owning 95% compacts, but, so, why I mention all this is, well, I may not be able to answer your question, but if you do have a question or answer or some commentary, you may uh, feel free to leave it, provided that it is uh, constructive. And I know uh, IBM Museum is a great resource for anything related to IBM. So I know he watches his stuff, and I'm going to suggest you go over by him and ask questions. and Because he will likely have a lot more in-depth answer than I will. So. so yes, I am going to put this thing together and get it out to the customer. And thank you for watching. Have a good one.